today's uh, Veterans in Politics Municipal Candidate 2009 endorsement interview. George Hotty just gave the invocation. My name is Steve Sanson, President of Veterans in Politics, and we have on the uh, voting panel, we have V. Carson, Rhonda Kennedy, Sage Bocook, Paul Jackson, and Don Wilbright will be the election panel. The first seat that we're going to interview is City of Las Vegas, Ward Number 4. We have Regent Stavros Anthony, Gary M. Pazea, and Glenn Trowbridge. The first question is going to come from Rhonda Kennedy. respecting what the people voted for. Uh, as far as his procedural way of handling it, I mean, it's in the uh, Nevada Constitution. It's also in the United States Constitution that the president can sign a bill or not sign a bill uh, or, or um, uh, act to, to sign a bill, veto a bill, and not sign it. And he's using that particular procedure to just not sign the bill and let it become law. And, and that's his decision, and he has the, uh, the right to do it under our Constitution. So. So you personally, you, you're, you're okay with it? Personally, you're okay with the decision? Yeah, I can't, I mean, I, I'm not sure exactly what his reasoning is, but it, it is within the realm of the Nevada Constitution. He has the authority to do it, and I don't have a problem with him doing it. Okay. Yeah. Second question will come from Don Wilbright. This, uh, this question is for uh, Mr. Glenn Tolbridge. And uh, I noticed that uh, you were endorsed by the uh, police department and the uh, fire department. And uh, I wanted to get your feelings on uh, tax abatement as far as the uh, city and your feelings as far as, you know, how you feel about the tax abatement and, and is there anything that you'd like to add to that? What do you mean by tax abatement? Yes, sir. Where, do you know what tax abatement is? Generally speaking, that's okay. a pretty big what, is, what is your feelings as far as the city using tax abatement? You're going to have to tell me more about what tax abatement is from your okay. perspective. Tax abatement is where uh, a business comes in or an entity and they allow them to abate taxes so that they can uh, basically bring additional businesses in. Tax, tax deferment. Okay, now I know where you are. Mm -hmm. Tax deferment is used as a, as a method to entice businesses to come. Correct. When it's done in a, a reasonable and fair fashion, a reasonable amount of time to offset the initial cost of establishing a, a business that will employ locals, and <coughs> the amount of employment is, is has a nexus, has a relationship to the amount of revenue that's going to be generated by the additional employment. It's worthwhile, but it should not be um, overused. It's a it's a good process done judiciously. Okay, let me just kind of define it a little bit. So if a company comes in and they, they request tax abatement, you're okay with that? If it's if it's tied to the number of people they're employing, the wages the people are going to be paid, there's got to be a payoff for the city. Otherwise, it's a losing proposition. There are there are occasions where tax abatement is very attractive. If someone wanted to come town, come to town and employ a thousand people, mm -hmm. and ask for tax abatement for a two-year period to offset their cost of relocating their mm -hmm. headquarters and they're going to employ a thousand locals, that's a good uh, that's a good move in my mind. If they're going to move to town and hire ten people that they really and truly bring with them from Atlanta and they want ten-year tax abatement, then of course it's no good. So it's a judgment call based upon the situation. I just want to add one more thing to it. What is the negative connotation of tax abatement? Somebody's getting a free ride. Okay. I paid my taxes, the other guy should too.
Next question will be from Paul Jackson. Um, um, we're looking at lots of money coming into the state um, due to the um, uh, due to the stimulus package. Um, what are your thoughts on how they should be used and where we can use them and, and where the shortfall, we, there's some situation we can't use those monies. Uh, for example, are there any shovel-ready projects in the city that could be put forward and, and utilize the, uh, the stimulus money right away? Actually, that, um, that's interesting you asked that. Um, I was actually just uh, appointed the, uh, the uh, grants administrator for the Las Vegas Police Department. They called me the grand czar. Uh, so I'm responsible for, uh, for looking at all the public safety uh, grants that are coming into Nevada from the, the Stimulus Act and, and where those should go. And uh, one of the things that we're doing, w which is interesting, is um, uh, in the past it would be one of these where you know metros the metros the big uh, the big gorilla and wants all the money we're not going to do that we're gonna we're gonna help other agencies other criminal justice agencies uh, uh, get a lot of that recovery for example the district attorney's office uh, needs prosecutors uh, uh, there's other places that need uh, correctional facilities so we're going to help other criminal justice agencies actually uh, get part of that grant money so uh, my focus right now is getting that money into um, uh, the public safety area because uh, really if we don't have a safe city, if we don't have the, 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 the resources for the police department, the rest of it is, really doesn't matter. I mean we have to have a safe city to protect our neighborhoods and protect our city and protect our citizens. So that's kind of my focus right now. Uh, other projects in the city uh, that could use recovery stimulus money, I, I don't really have a handle on to actually tell you what, where that money would go to right now. 